They were horrendous crimes. Five elderly women suffocated in their sleep at the former Alpine Manor nursing home in Walker. Today, more than 30 years later, relatives argued to keep one of the killers locked up. And the hearing had a bizarre ending. We have team coverage on this monumental hearing on a case we've covered, we've covered since the killings happened back in the 1980s. Evan Dean talked with the victims' families about the outcome of the hearing, but first Ken Kolker breaks down what played out in court. Yeah, good evening. The main reason for today's hearing was to determine if Catherine Wood should be released from prison right away. But Wood, her live image shown on a wall of the courtroom, made it an easy call. I can just stay right here until the foot for the appeal is done. Well, that doesn't need to be made a decision. I had no problem with that. Wood is 29 years into her 20 to 40 year sentence at a federal prison in Florida. She and her then lover, Gwendolyn Graham, suffocated five elderly patients at Alpine Manor Nursing Home in 1987. Graham got life in prison without parole. The Michigan Parole Board in September granted Woods parole, leading families of her victims to reach out to Target 8, then to file an appeal. Today, as Wood appeared to be towering over them in the video feed, those families argued to keep her locked up. Kathy Woods and Gwen Graham picked and chose who was going to die and followed through with the murders of my mother and the other ladies. Well, it's a safer place with her behind the bars because she's going to do something again. Every year that she's behind the bars, even if it's only for a couple more years, is one more year that nobody has to worry about terror in the eyes of a helpless old person. The attorney leading the fight to keep her locked up had more at stake than just winning a case. His mother-in-law was one of the victims. What was it like seeing her up there? I mean, she, she killed your mother-in-law. Yeah, she did. The, attorneys for the, fa the attorney for the family says this will now go back to the parole board, and if the parole board reaffirms its decision to release her, then it would go back to the Kent County Circuit Court. And of course, it's something that will continue to follow. Live in Grand Rapids, Ken Colker, 24 Hour News 8. All right, Ken, thank you. And now to Evan Dean, who is getting reaction from the victim's families. Evan? Yeah, Brian, good evening. Obviously, the families of those killed by Catherine Wood are pleased that she'll remain in prison as the appeals process plays out. As for her volunteering to stay there, they say it's all part of an act. What did you make of that move? Um, she's manipulating again. She's playing to the judge, and that's why she's doing it. She, she's going to stay there and do whatever he wants for her benefit. For the families of those killed by Catherine Wood and her lesbian lover back in the late 80s, this marked the first time they'd seen her since the trial 29 years ago. Stephanie Scruggs, whose grandmother Mae Mason was among those murdered, psychopaths never ever change, did not hold back during testimony. When I was 17 years old and all this happened, I was powerless and I didn't have a voice because I was just a kid. I'm not powerless anymore. For much of the testimony, including from the granddaughter of victim Belle Burkhardt, Wood sat there staring emotionless. I was furious with her that she could sit there and be have that stone face, you know, while the victim's families are trying to keep her in prison. Towards the end of the hearing, finally this, an attempt by the killer to explain. You know why I was staring at you? Because I was paying attention. I, I think those tears were just an act. Always. For now, it remains to be seen if Wood will be paroled or if the appeal will work and keep her behind bars for the remainder of her sentence. Her victims' families are praying for the latter. They say if she got out, they'd be fearful for their lives. We're putting alarms on the house, cameras everywhere. I have a gun. I want this woman, this manipulative monster, kept off the streets. Now, the victim's families also took aim at the attorney for the parole board. They say they were not notified properly in this case, and they want changes made to the system. And, you know, Catherine Wood's own daughter, she was also here today for the hearing. We tried to talk with her afterwards. She did not want to comment on the case. Of course, we will continue to follow this as it plays out. Reporting live in Grand Rapids, Evan Dean, 24-Hour News 8.